Hello Grade Nines, this is Mr. Miller and welcome to Lesson 9.2 on Solving Single Step Inequalities. So in number one we want to list three values that would make each inequality or combination of inequalities true. So the first inequality is x less than or equal to negative four and so maybe it's helpful to look at it on the, on the number line first. <clears throat> so let's just look at the number line. So x equals negative 4 is part of the solution, so we should put a closed circle on that. And it's x less than or equal to negative 4, so we should be shading to the left. So now based on that, you can see that three values that would be part of the solution are x equals negative 4, so that's the borderline point. <clears throat> x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 6. Of course, we could have specified x equals negative 4.5 as well. Um, so it didn't necessarily have to be just integers, but these three certainly do work. So next we've got x greater than negative 3. So on the number line, here's what that looks like. Here is negative 3. And we're not going to include this boundary point because it's greater than but not equal to. And if it's greater than negative 3, that means that we're shading to the right here. So points that I could include would be x equals negative 2 as part of the solution, x equals negative 1 x equals 0, or I could have even included 1, but I only needed to specify 3 points, so that certainly will do it. And now let's take a look at this combined inequality, the x greater than or equal to negative 2 and x less than or equal to 5. And of course, we can combine this into a single inequality statement, negative 2 less than or equal to x and less than or equal to 5, or you can read it as x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 5. In any case, what that looks like on the number line <clears throat> is we have the negative 2 is included as the left boundary, and x equals 5 is included as the right boundary, and in between we're including all of these points in between. So just shading in between here, it's everything in there. So now you can pick any points in between, you can even include the endpoints if you want. So I decided to include x equals negative 2, you could certainly use that. x equals 3.6, so that's certainly in between negative 2 and positive 5. I could have included x equals positive 5, but I decided to make my last point x equals 4. And that's it. So now moving on to number two, we want to solve some inequalities and there is a little note here that you might want to write down. Solving an inequality is the same as solving an equation, except that if you divide or multiply both sides by a negative, you reverse the direction of the inequality. So um, <clears throat> I had mentioned before that solving equations, solving inequalities is very similar to solving equations. Um, but there is this little subtle difference. Now, if you're curious as to why, I'll just show you in a little rough note here off to the side, why that's the case. So, um, let's suppose, for instance, that we just have that negative x is less than 3, for instance. And I'd rather not have a negative x, I'd rather know what positive x is. Um, but I'm not going to divide by negative one here because it's sort of implying that there's a little, there's something a little bit funny about doing that here. So let's do something that might seem a little bit safer. Like let's add x to both sides of the equation. And if I do that, here's what I end up with. I end up with zero on the left, a less than symbol, and I have three plus x on the right. Now, if I want to have my variable on the other side, then I need to have my constant on the left. So I'm going to subtract 3 from this side, and I'm going to subtract 3 from this side. So that gives me negative 3 is less than x. 
Okay. So this reads negative 3 is less than x, or in other words, x is greater than negative 3. Now, if I had done this the other way, okay, if I had taken the negative x less than 3, and I had divided both sides by the coefficient of the variable, which is negative 1, then I end up with an x on the left, and I end up with a negative 3 on the right. And so now we see why this needs to be greater than negative 3. So the one operation of either multiplying or dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative number forces us to reverse the direction of the inequality in order to maintain that inequality. So, and now, even on a more basic level, just looking at numbers, if you look at the number, um, <clears throat> let's say 2, well, 2 is certainly less than 3, right? Um, but if I divide both sides by negative 1, then would you say that negative 2 is less than negative 3? Um, well, let's see, here's 0, here's negative 1, here's negative 2, and here's negative 3 on the number line. Is negative 2 less than negative 3? No, it's the other way around. Negative 2 is bigger than negative 3 because it's further to the right on the number line. So this is wrong here. If we divide by a negative number, then what we have to do is we have to reverse the direction of the inequality. So anyways, those are just some little rough notes. You didn't necessarily need to copy that down, but I'm just trying to help you to understand why it is that when we divide both sides of the equation by a negative number, that we should be reversing the direction of the inequality. So now let's get on with the solving and see if we can do these. So again, the instructions are that you do the same as solving an equation, except that if you divide or multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality. So now just focusing on the first one, we've got x plus 5 is less than or equal to 12. Since I have a single variable in the single location in this inequality, I'm going to use the method of inverses. So adding 5 to x, how do I undo that? I subtract 5 from both sides, and that gives me x is less than or equal to 7. Let's take a look at the next one. Here we have x in a single location um, in the equation. It's the only variable. We're subtracting 9 from it, so to solve, we're going to add 9 to both sides, and that gives us x is less than 11 or 11 is greater than x, but it's the same thing. Now, in part c, if you're not too keen on having decimals, then you can start by multiplying both sides of the equation by a power of 10 that will clear out all the decimals, so that's just 10 in this case. You have to use your distributive property to do 10 times 7.4, which gives you 74, and also 10 times x, which gives you 10x, and the 10 times 6.2 is 62. Now, you have to have all your variables on one side, so that's the 10x. You have to have all your constants on the other side, so that means we're going to have to subtract 74 from both sides. So 74 minus 74 is 0. You're just left with the 10x on the left. 62 minus 74 gives you negative 12. And last step is we divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable. So dividing both sides by 10, you get x equals negative 1.2. Now, I should mention that you could write your solution as um, x is greater than or equal to negative uh, 6 over 5 if you'd rather have it as a fraction in lowest terms or you can write it as x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and 1 fifth so whether you write it as an improper fraction or a mixed fraction it doesn't really matter to me too much <clears throat> again the most important thing is 
that you've got your answer, if you've got it as the negative 10, uh, 12 over 10 and reducing that, you want to reduce it down to lowest terms. Um, and the other thing is that you want to have it exact. So I think it's okay to keep it as a decimal because this is a terminating decimal and this is still an exact solution. Let's go over to part D here. And I'm just going to work with the decimals as is here. Adding 4.2 to both sides, you'd get x equals 7.7. .7, so that's the 3.5 plus 4.2. And next we've got 4 times x is less than or equal to negative 16. So we divide both sides by 4. And that gives us x is less than or equal to negative 4. Now notice, since I was dividing both sides by a positive, I didn't change the direction of the inequality. I maintained the same direction. So last one here. This one, I do have a negative coefficient on the variable. So when I divide both sides by that negative coefficient, I need to reverse. So notice the alligator switches directions. Okay, x is less than negative 13, which is the 16.9 uh, divided by negative 1.3. Let's take a look at part G here. We've got x divided by 5 is less than or equal to negative 4. So to undo that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. So the left hand side times 5, the right hand side times 5. 5 times the fifth x is 1x, and negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. So it's x less than or equal to negative 20. And this one here, dividing both sides by the coefficient of the variable. The coefficient of the variable is negative a quarter. So I know division of fractions can be a little bit tricky for some people, but um, one thing you do need to be careful of is since we're dividing by a negative number here, we do need to reverse the direction of the inequality. And if you weren't sure how I got the negative 12 out of this, you're taking that 3 as a fraction, 3 over 1, and you are multiplying by the reciprocal of negative 1 quarter, which is negative 4 over 1. And so that explains how you get the negative 12 here. So if that's helpful, you can make note of that. All right, let's move on to the next page. Next thing we want to look at is doing a verification. Uh, we want to verify that the specified solution is correct for each inequality. Now, the instructions are here. You need to check the boundary point. There's a one star here. That means the boundary point must satisfy the corresponding equation, which is the inequality with the sign changed to an equal sign. So x equals negative 5 needs to make 2x equal to negative 10. That's how you know you have the correct boundary point. Now, <clears throat> x is greater than negative 5, for instance, um, so it means that it's the points to the right of negative 5. So you have to pick another point in the solution such as negative 4, or negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever. Another point in the solution, and that other point should satisfy the inequation. So that x equals whatever, 0, 3, 10, anything that's bigger than negative 5 should make the left-hand side 2x less than the right-hand side, which is negative 10. So let's take a look at this detailed um, check of the inequality. So for part A, we start with the boundary point. We're going to check x equals negative 5. The left-hand side is 2x. If we replace the x with negative 5 and calculate, we find that it's equal to negative 10. The right-hand side of the inequality is also negative 10, so the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal, and that's good for a boundary point. 
So since x equals negative 5 satisfies the corresponding equation, that is 2x equals negative 10, it is the correct boundary point. It's the point that will make those two sides equal. Now you do need to pick another point. And on the number line, um, a point x that is greater than negative 5 could be, for instance, x equals 0. 0 is greater than negative 5. Let's see what happens when we use x equals 0. So we start with the original left-hand side, which is 2x. Replace the x with 0 and calculate 2 times 0, and that's 0. Now let's compare that with the right-hand side, which is negative 10. <clears throat> and we ask ourselves, does this point x equals 0 make the left-hand side less than the right-hand side? Is 0 less than negative 10? And no, it is not. So since x equals 0 does not satisfy the in equation, it is not part of the solution, and therefore x greater than negative 5 is incorrect. It actually should have been x less than negative 5. So there's an example of a check that's done and showing a solution that's invalid. I'm going to skip over to part C here, and I know this isn't on your sheet. If you could just add this example in, 2x less than 10 and x less than 5, because this actually is the correct solution of this inequality, and I want to show you what a check looks like when you have the correct solution. So we're going to start off the same way, checking the boundary point x equals 5, starting with the original left-hand side, 2x, replacing the x with 5, and calculating it's 10. And the right-hand side is also 10. So this x equals 5 makes the left-hand side and right-hand side equal, and that's what we want out of our boundary point. So since x equals 5 satisfies the corresponding equation, which is 2x equal 10, it is the correct boundary point. Boundary points should make the left-hand side and right-hand side equal. And now we want to go on to check another point, such as, well, if x is less than 5, it needs to be something like 3. We take the original left-hand side, which is 2x, replace the x with 3, and calculate 2 times 3, that's 6. The right-hand side, remember, is still just 10. Now we want to verify whether the left-hand side is less than the right-hand side as it should be. Is 6 less than 10? Yes, it is. So since x equals 3 satisfies the inequation, in other words, it makes the 2x less than 10 as it should be, that means that <clears throat> x equals 3 is a valid part of this solution as well. So therefore, x less than 5, which is the solution that was proposed, is the correct solution since both the boundary point and the other points are correct. So we did get the correct boundary point, and the other point, x equals 3, was correct. So overall, this is a correct solution. And we've got one more example here. The inequality is negative 3x less than or equal to negative 24, and the proposed solution is x less than or equal to 8. So starting with that boundary point, x equals 8, we want to check what it does to the left-hand side and right-hand side. Left-hand side is negative 3x. Replacing the x with 8 and calculating, we get negative 24. Well, that matches the right-hand side. So since x equals 8 satisfies the corresponding equation, which just means negative 3x equals negative 24, it is the correct boundary point. Now we want to check another point. So another x value, not x equal to 8, we want an x value that's less than 8 now, such as 7. We want to start with the left-hand side of the inequality, negative 3x, 
replace the x with 7, and calculate its negative 21. Now the right hand side is still just negative 24. Is negative 21 less than or equal to negative 24? No, negative 21 is greater than negative 24 because it's further to the right on the number line. So since x equals 7 does not satisfy the in equation, it is not part of the solution. And so therefore, x less than or equal to 8 is incorrect. What would have been correct, again, is if we had switched this up to x greater than or equal to 8. All right, let's move on to number 4. We want to write and solve an this should have been an equation. You see, I've typed this in in tiny little letters here. If you could just add in the I n before the equation there, the in equation to determine the values of x that give the rectangle shown, uh, and it's really shown down here in part b, this rectangle, which has got a length of uh, x plus 2 and a width of 5. Um, actually, we're going to find out later that really this x plus 2 should have been called the width because it ends up being shorter than 5. But anyways. Uh, so, the values of x that give the rectangle that we just looked at an area of no more than 25 square units. So, if you do length times width, 5 times x plus 2, it should be no more than 25 square units, so less than or equal to 25. So, to solve this inequality, I use the method of inverses. I look at what am I doing to x? adding 2, then multiplying by 5. So I'm going to divide by 5 first, and then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and that gives me x less than or equal to 3. Of course, if you want to, you can expand the brackets first, then make sure your variables are on one side, constants on the other side, divide by the coefficient of the variable, but you'll find that there's a little bit more in terms of the steps to show for that. So now <clears throat> that we have that part of it, let's ask ourselves, are there values of x that would not be possible for the, now that we know x is less than 3, less than or equal to 3, um, 3 plus 2 is 5, but even smaller than that, say 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, that would really be the width of this rectangle. So the diagram is not exactly accurate. So are there any values for x that would make the um, width impossible and explain? So this width here, um, this x plus 2, it should be greater than 0, okay? And it makes sense. The width should be greater than 0. If you're measuring the width of a rectangle, it shouldn't be 0 and it shouldn't be negative. It should be positive. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, then we get x has to be greater than negative 2. So if we combine the solution of part a, which is x is less than or equal to 3, with what we have here in part b, which is x is greater than negative 2, we've got the statement x is greater than negative 2 and it's x is less than or equal to 3 which we can combine into this one statement, and this is equivalent, and it's, but it's a little bit more compact. Now, if you want to put that onto a number line, then you can show the two points, negative 2 and positive 3. And what you would do, since x is greater than negative 2, but we don't want to include the 2, we put an open circle here. x is supposed to be... It could potentially be equal to 3, so we put a closed circle here. And it's all of the x values in between, so we just shade in between those two. And that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching this video. You can get started on your practice questions in the textbook now. Um, 
feel free to ask questions in class to clarify anything that wasn't understood here. And have yourselves a great day.